Proximity sensing is a very common application in electronics. There are several ways to accomplish this. The most common way is by using a PIR sensor. PIR sensor senses the change in ambient infrared radiation caused by warm bodies. I have already covered this in my tutorial number 5, PIR sensor tutorial with or without Arduino. However, since PIR sensors detect movement from living object, they can generate false alarms. These sensors are also inefficient in hot environments as they rely on heat signatures. The other common method of proximity sensing involves using reflected ultrasonic or light beams. Using these sensors, the intruding object is detected by the reflected beam back to its source. The time delay between the transmission and reception is measured to calculate the distance to the object. In this tutorial, we are going to look at another method of proximity sensing using microwave and Doppler effect. In my hand is an inexpensive RCWL0516 microwave radar motion sensor. The RCWL0516 microwave sensor detects any movement from any object and does not rely on heat, making it more reliable in hot environments. I'm going to use this sensor to create a geofence around my house to detect motion and get notifications. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay specializes in manufacturing of very high quality, low volume colored PCBs at a very budgetary price. In addition to standard PCBs, you can also order advanced PCBs, aluminum PCBs, rigid flex PCBs. They also provide PCB assembly and other related services which can meet your need to the greatest extent. The RCWL0516 module uses a Doppler radar that makes use of the Doppler effect to detect motion and trigger proximity alert. So before understanding how this sensor works, let's understand the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect is named after the Austrian physicist Christian Doppler who described this phenomenon in 1842. He described the change in frequency observed by a stationary observer when the source of the frequency is moving. The sound's pitch is higher than the emitted frequency when the sound source approaches the observer as the sound waves are squeezed into shorter distance which can then be heard as a high pitch. The opposite happens when the object moves away from the observer causing the sound waves to become lower in frequency and lower in pitch. As a result, the observer can hear a noticeable drop in the pitch as it passes. This holds true for all sort of waves such as water, light, radio and sound. Like the PIR sensors, these sensors also detect the movement within their detection range. But instead of sniffing the black body radiation of a moving object, these sensors use microwave Doppler radar technique to detect a moving object. Doppler microwave detection device transmit a continuous signal of low energy microwave radiation at a target area and then analyze the reflected signal. The target's velocity can be measured by analyzing how the target's motion altered the frequency of the transmitted signal. Due to Doppler's effect, the frequency of the reflected microwave signal is different from the transmitted signal when the object is moving towards or away from the sensor. When a car approaches a speed trap radar, the frequency of the return signal is greater than the frequency of the transmitted signal. And when the car moves away, the frequency is lower. This is how a speed gun calculates the speed of a car. The technical specification of this sensor are Operating voltage is between 4 to 28 volts. Detection distance is between 5 to 7 meters. Maximum current drawn is 2.7 milliamps. Operating frequency is 3.18 gigahertz. Transmission power is 20 milliwatt. Signal length is 2 seconds and regulated output is 3.3 volts at 100 milliamps. The RCWL0516 module is a single breakout board with the following connections. 3.3, it is the output from the onboard 3.3 volt regulator which can be used to power external circuits. Remember, this is not an input pin. This pin can provide up to 100 milliamp of current. GND is the ground pin. 
out is the 3.3 volt TTL logic output. This pin goes high for 2 seconds when a motion is detected and goes low when no motion is detected. V in provides power to the module. Connect this pin to an input voltage anywhere between 4 to 28 volt. However, 5 volt is commonly used. This module consumes less than 3 milliamp of current. So you can easily power this by the 5 volt output pin of an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. CDS pins are where you attach an optional LDR allowing it to operate only in the dark. You can connect the LDR to the sensor in two ways. By using the two CDS pads on the top of the module or by connecting one end of the LDR to the CDS pin at the terminal end and the other end to ground. We will cover this in full details in the demo section. Remember, this module comes without any connection pins attached to it. Unlike the PIR sensor, this is an active sensor. The module sends out microwave signals actively at a frequency of about 3.18 GHz and measures the reflected signals. The heart of this module is a Doppler radar controller IC RCWL9196. This IC is very similar to the BIS0001 IC found in the PIR sensors. The chip also supports repeat triggers and has a 360 degree detection area without any blind spots. The MMBR941M RF amplifier is a high speed NPN transistor Q1 that takes low power RF signal and boosts it to high power level. The antenna is integrated on the PCB. It has a detection range of approximately 7 meters while only consuming less than 3 milliamp of current. When triggered, the output pin will switch from low 0 volt to high 3.3 volts for 2 to 3 seconds before returning to its low idle state. The transistor Q1 also acts as a mixture that combines the transmitted and received signal and outputs the difference which is filtered by the low pass filter formed by C9 and R8 and is amplified by the IC. This module has three jumper settings at the back of it. The sensor's default settings can be altered by populating these jumpers with appropriate resistors and capacitors. CTM pulse length adjustment. By installing a suitable SMD capacitor, you can adjust the repeat trigger time by extending the output pulse length. Default trigger time is 2 seconds. Increasing the capacitor's capacity will make the trigger time longer. A point to microfarad capacitor extends the output pulse to 50 seconds, while a 1 microfarad capacitor extends it to 250 seconds. RGN detection range adjustment. By installing a suitable resistor, you can reduce the detection range. The default detection range is 7 meters. If you install a 1 meg resistor, the distance reduces to 5 meters, while a 270k resistor reduces it to 1.5 meters. RCDS light sensitivity adjustment. You can use this as an alternative to soldering the LDR. Any resistor between 47k to 100k will suffice. The lower the value, the brighter the light must be in order to disable the trigger. This sensor is capable of working on its own even without a microcontroller. In my first example, I'm going to show you guys how useful it is on its own. The wiring is very simple. You just need to connect the sensors V in and ground to the power supply. Then connect a LED to the out pin via a 220 ohm current limiting resistor. That's it. As easy as that. Now when the module senses motion, LED lights up for about 2 seconds when the out pin of the sensor goes high. You can replace the LED with a relay module if you want to turn something on or off based on motion. This setup is exactly same as the previous one with an addition of an LDR. As discussed earlier, you can either connect the LDR to the two CDS pads on the top of the sensor or attach one leg of the LDR to the CDS pin at the bottom of the module and the other end to the ground. LDRs don't have polarity, so they can be connected in any direction of your choice. When the LDR is exposed to light, the resistance of the LDR decreases and you will notice that the sensor produces no output. However, the sensor resumes normal operation once the room is darkened. This property of the sensor can be used in spotting intruders in night or to control light in a room. While this module works well on its own, it also works well as a sensor when hooked up to a microcontroller or a microcomputer. In this example, I'm going to light up an LED using an Arduino when the sensor senses a motion. Power the sensor from the 5V pin of Arduino and connect the out pin to pin number 2 of Arduino. Now connect the LED to pin number 3 of Arduino via a 220 ohm current limiting resistor. Upload the code and swipe your hand over the sensor. 
The red LED lights up and the serial monitor displays the message motion detected when the sensor detects a motion. You can do all sort of funky stuff using this sensor. You can attach this module to a Node MCU or to a NRF20L01 transceiver module or to a 433 MHz RF transmitter receiver module to send the detected motion information as a notification to a mobile device or save it in a database. These sensors are very cheap and compact. The PCB itself is less than 4 mm thick. They can penetrate through walls and holes, allowing them to have a wide detection range. Radar signals can penetrate through non-conductive materials such as plastic and wood, allowing them to be hidden or protected from accidental damage. These sensors can work perfectly fine behind 18 mm thick piece of pine wood, 50 mm thick hardback book with no obvious reduction in the sensitivity. These sensors are safe. They put out very low level of microwave at 3.1 gigahertz. They are not affected by heat much and have a better detection range than the traditional IR sensors. They are incredibly sensitive to movement and can detect small movements very easily. Since these sensors rely on the Doppler radar system, signal reflected from other nearby objects can interfere with the measurement, making it less reliable and accurate than the other sensors. These sensors and all its leads need to be rigidly mounted. If the connecting leads are subject to movement or vibration, they will trigger the sensor. These sensors don't work behind normal standard double glazed panels. The reflections from metals can also influence the measurement. They can be triggered by wind. You can use an aluminium foil to block the microwave signal from the sensor. These sensors can be used in burglar alarm, intruder detection, smart security devices, human sensing toys, geofencing, Halloween props, sensing people or animal through walls even without light, security and motion sensing light switches. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope it helps you. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. Thanks. See you again in my next video. Bye now.